Hey, it's Envey. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Armored Core 4 and Armored Core 4 Answer on PC with multiplayer. The process is pretty quick and should only take about 10 minutes, depending on your download speed. Before we get started, you'll need a couple things. First and foremost, a way to extract 7-zip files that is not WinRunner. WinRAR users frequently have issues extracting the files needed to play the game. I'm not sure why WinRAR specifically causes issues, but it does, so please use a different program. I personally like NanoZip. The other thing you'll need is a controller. This game is technically playable with a keyboard and mouse, but it has several mechanics that rely on pressure sensitivity to work. Most keyboards aren't pressure sensitive, so playing with a keyboard will mean losing out on those mechanics entirely. The game also just feels really bad on keyboard and mouse, since it was not designed with that input method in mind. Let's start with installing NanoZip. The process is super easy. Just open the Microsoft Store, search NanoZip, and click install. That's it. NanoZip is installed and ready to start unzipping stuff. You don't need to use NanoZip. You can use 7-Zip instead if you prefer, and I already have that installed. But NanoZip comes with a dark theme, so I, I like it. Now that we have our prerequisites installed, let's download the game. Once again, we're headed to the description to get the files we need. The download links are split up into two sections, emulator files and game files. You need both. Without game files, the emulator doesn't do anything, and without the emulator, you can't play the game files. Once you've downloaded the emulator and game files from the description, you'll need to locate where you downloaded them to. For most people, this will be their downloads folder. If you're not sure where the file went, you can click on the little arrow in the top right of your screen, then click Show in Folder. Once you've located the file, double-click on the pcfaemulator.7z file that you downloaded. If it asks what program that you want to open it with, select Nanazip. After you've opened the file, drag and drop the PCFA folder to wherever you'd like it to live. In my case, I've got a folder called PS3 stuff that I'll be dropping into. The extraction process can take anywhere between a couple seconds and a couple of minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. But once it's done, open up the PCFA folder you just dragged out, and then open up the folder labeled Put Your Games Here. If it's not clear already what we'll be doing, we'll be putting our games here. Head back to your downloads folder and grab the games you'd like to play. In my case, I've grabbed both Armored Core 4 and 4 Answer. You'll need to double click the .7z files for both games, if you're planning on playing both, and then drag the contents of both files into the Put Your Games Here folder, like I'm doing on screen now. These will probably take significantly longer to copy over because the files are much bigger. Go get some water while you wait. You probably aren't drinking enough. Hydrate and all that. Also subscribe. Once you've got your water and your games are finished moving over, we're going to go back to the PCFA folder and double click on the shortcut called PCFA Launcher. If you've done everything right so far, your emulator should look exactly like mine does on screen right now, and both games should be present on the list. Before we can play though, we'll need to do a couple more steps. First and most importantly, click on the Pads button at the top of the emulator window. I've set this to X input by default because most controllers are X input, which is the one Xboxes use. If you have a PS4 or a PS5 controller though, you'll need to go to the Handlers tab and pick the controller that you've got. DualShock 4 for PS4 and DualSense for PS5. To test if the controller is working, look at the trigger thresholds and stick preview boxes while you pull the triggers and while you move the sticks. If you see them move, your controller is working. We have one final step, which is to set up PvP for the game. You're only here for the campaign. The games work from here on out, and you can launch them and get playing. But I really suggest playing the PvP, because it's by far the best part of the game. For those who have stuck around for the PvP setup, are my favorite people. Can't wait to play some games with you guys. You're so much cooler than those single-player-only dudes who just clicked off the video. As of very recently, both Armored Core 4 and 4 Answer work over RPCN, the emulated PlayStation Network alternative that the RPCS3 team have cooked up. This also fixes the co-op missions, which are now playable with friends for the first time on PC. To play both games online, you'll need an RPCN account. Thankfully, unlike Sony, the awesome dudes over at RPCS3 don't charge us monthly to play games, and account creation is entirely free. To create an account, click on the Configuration button at the top of the RPCS3 window, and then from the drop-down pick RPCM. Hit Create Account, and then set your username to whatever you'd like it to be, then create a password. Enter in your email address and hit OK, then check your email for an email from the RPCS3 team with your token. Copy and paste that token into RPCS3, and then hit OK, and your account should be working. You can verify this by hitting the Test Account button. Now that you've got your RPCN account set up, it's time to test it with another player to make sure that it works. 
Find a player who has played online before by heading over to the 4th gen channel and pinging the role for the game you want to play. PC-FA for 4 answer and PC-AC4 for AC4. In my case, I'm playing 4 answer. Ask your opponent to host the lobby and make sure you're both on the same regulation. If you're not on the same regulation as your opponent, you will not be able to connect to them. The version included in this video will always come with the most recent community regulations. Boot up 4 answer. Head to multiplayer from the main menu and load your save, then select online. From here, head over to player match and hit quick match. If all goes well, you should show up in your opponent's lobby. If the connection fails, you may need to look into setting up port forwarding on your router for port 3658, or enabling universal plug and play. Universal plug and play is frequently abbreviated to a UPnP in settings menus. Unfortunately, port forwarding and UPnP setup are different for each router, so I won't be able to help you with that part. You'll need to check the manual for your specific router and follow the instructions there. I'll also have the help page for RPCN linked in the description, which has a few more troubleshooting steps users can try if they're unable to connect. If you can't get connected to other players even after messing with your port forwarding settings, or don't have access to your router and can't change your port forwarding settings, you can still play online using Radmin VPN. Unfortunately, Radmin doesn't support co-op play, but it can still be used to play PvP as a last resort. It's very much not ideal to use though, so I want to stress that you should try your very best to make RPC and work before resorting to using Radmin. To get Radmin, head to the link in the description and click the big free download button. Then run the file that it downloads. Once Radmin opens up and you see your IP address, double click on it to select all the text, then right click and hit copy. This is not your real IP, it is only used for Radmin, so you don't need to worry about other people seeing it. This process is the same for either game, but for this example, we'll be using Armored Core 4. Right click the game in your emulator, then hit change custom configuration. Go to the network tab and paste your IP address in the box that says bind address. Set RPCN to disconnect it. Hit apply, then save custom configuration. To play with other users, you'll need to be on the same Radmin network as them. If the people you're playing with have an existing Radmin network, hit network and then join network, entering in the information that they provide to you. If they don't have a network already, hit network and then create network. Networks are free to create and have a limit of 150 people. Once you and your opponent are both connected to the same network, ask them to host a match. Boot up the game and head to LAN Play or System Link from the multiplayer menu, and then hit Enter Match. In Armored Core 4, the option is called System Link, and in Armored Core 4 Answer, it's called LAN. Despite the difference in name, they work the same. You may get a firewall pop-up at this point. If you do, make sure to hit Allow on both private and public networks. If you don't select both private and public networks, you're likely to have connection issues. If all's gone well, you should be in your opponent's lobby and ready to play the game. And with that, you're all set for both single player and the multiplayer of both Armored Core 4 and 4 Answer. Both games have terrible tutorials, so I've linked some videos down below that have more detailed explanations on how to play 4th gen. I've also included four builds in the 100% save file. Netcode Gaming, a midweight that likes to stay at mid-range. Bomber, a lightweight with grenades. Sniper, a heavyweight with a sniper, and Bezel Tank, a tank from Bezel, who's one of the best players in the world. Sub to him, it's criminal that his name doesn't come up when you search for it, his channel's in the description. I'm, I'm serious, you should give that guy some views. And finally, if you'd like to find people to play with, the best place to do it is the Armored Core Discord. There's fairly consistent games of PvP that get played there on the daily, and if you'd like to play, you can ping that at PCFA role in the 4th gen channel, and someone will probably respond. With all that, thanks, sub, like, and please play the game as PvP. We really need some more players.